Hey guys, so this is just a little clip of present me talking before you watch of the video that I filmed way in the past. I filmed this last July or August, um, but obviously I never got around to uploading it and I know that it's still a highly requested video. So I just wanted to say that yeah, um, obviously I look completely different. My hair is a lot longer in this video and I did film this straight after coming back from my gap year. But if you do have any other questions or queries then please do put them in the comment section below or tweet me or direct message me whatever um, and I will get around to answering them and yes if you do still want me to review the bag or if you want me to talk about what I took in my hand luggage or if you want me to talk about anything else travel related then yes I would still be up for that because my channel is hopefully not just going to be about university life. Hope you enjoy the video! Hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Viola Helen and today I want to do a video on what I took with me seven months backpacking around the world during my gap year. A lot of people have asked me what did I take, how did I decide what to take, how did I manage to deal with two completely opposite seasons, summer and winter, and I just wanted to talk about what kind of things I took with me, how I managed to take it in such a small rucksack, well it's not that small but I will show you it, and just all those kind of bits and bobs about things that you can take if you're planning a trip or you're stuck on what to take or you just need some kind of ideas then this is the place to come. So for those of you who don't know or you've only just stumbled across my place on the internet, I also run a blog called A Piece of Viola and I will link that in the description box below. I also have social media links with Snapchat and Instagram and I did use all of those when I was away on my travels. In December and January when I was in Australia obviously it was there summertime. I had summer there, had summer in Bali and then in the later months, April, May, June in China it was very hot but I did have a period when I first got to China in February and March where it was absolutely freezing cold. Absolutely freezing cold. Like freezing cold. So I did have to pack for winter as well as summer and I will show you how I did that. So let's start with what type of bag I took. I don't know if you can see this in the camera, this bag, and it is the Osprey Porter 46 litres, so it is smaller than your typical backpack, my friend's backpack I think was 65 litres, so I know lots of people take 55 litres and 65 litre backpacks, mine opens all the way round, like so, like this, uh, can you see that? So this is the reason why I chose this backpack because I wanted to be able to access everything easily in my bag without having to, I mean I did DOV and I hated having to scrabble around inside the bag trying to find anything I wanted. So that was one of the main reasons for choosing this bag. And although it does, I mean it looks fairly small but I did actually manage to get a heck of a lot of things in here which you will see. I can do a bag review and talk all about this bag and everything in another video if people want me to. And for hand luggage, my trusty Cancun. This Cancun is the best hand luggage bag to take with you. I will probably do another video of what was in my hand luggage, but this has survived all my trips. I've used it pretty much every single day. I just love it so much. And this is the classic size. So first, I think I will talk about, um, okay, toiletries. Let me talk about toiletries. Where are my toiletries? I had two toiletry bags, these two. For some reason, the video that I filmed talking about my toiletries was deleted, so here I am doing it again. This one I put in my hand luggage just because it had the essentials that I would need for flights or for coaches, and it was just nice to have them with me if I needed to freshen up. I'll just show you what I've got in here. I have a simple facial wash and the moisturizer hand cream here, mouthwash which as you can see I didn't even finish because I barely used it, the Dove deodorant roll-on spray, spray? Just roll-on deodorant, spare contact lenses and floss, flossing is good, it's small toothbrush in here, uh, just a spare one, cotton pads, I've got my tweezers, nail clippers, nail scissors, some hair grips as well and just other various hotel small bits in the back and I also have my makeup in here this is where girls go wrong when they go backpacking they take so 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 much makeup when you don't need it I don't usually wear a lot of makeup so I did just take 
small minimal amounts. I took a concealer which I only used when I was so tired after flights or coach journeys and then just a mascara and then finally just a basic powder. I didn't wear foundation or anything so I didn't take foundation or any BB cream. Um, I don't know, I don't wear makeup, I don't know how to use it so I'm gonna stop talking about it. Now I'll talk to you about the clothes I actually took with me. I use packing cubes. I use these e-bag packing cubes, this is the small size, this is the medium size, large size. I would definitely recommend using packing cubes if you're backpacking because it really, really, really helps you out. When you're packing your backpack, you can just take out specific cubes where you know you put certain clothes in. My small one I used for bikinis, underwear, bras, things like that. Four bikinis! Number one, number two, number three, I can't actually find the bottoms at the moment. Um, black just a plain black one, number four. So I did take a lot of, maybe too many bikinis, but you can never have too many bikinis, especially when I was in the sun pretty much all the time and on the beach a lot in Australia, so I did get a lot of wear out of them. I would say that if you are going to be on the beach and you are going backpacking and if you are going to Australia, take at least two bikinis because you'll need to wash them and it's just nice to have a nice variety and you can just mix and match them. Mix, mix and match them. I also took a bralette with me, a nice white bralette, which was really pretty. I took two sports bras as well for all the sporty activities I did. Two sports bras. For underwear, I think I took a total of 10 pairs. Two white and then the rest were just a random bunch because I had white dresses which needed white underwear. But you don't need to take as many as I did because you do wash as you go along. I just took a lot because I had space. For socks, I took about five or six pairs of trainer socks and for girls, for bras, I took two normal pairs, I took a white pair and a navy pair and then I took a strapless bra. The amount that I took was perfect, it was fine, although I did only come back with three pairs of socks and I did lose about three or four pairs of underwear, so I don't know what happened to those, but the amount I took was absolutely fine for travelling. also need a towel, this is the towel I took with me, it's pretty big, um, but it's a travel towel. I will leave a link in the description box to the one I got. It's very lightweight, it folds away, very, very, very small, I will show you. So it can either fold up like this in a square, or I've now lost the um, little package thing it came with. I don't know when I lost that, but when I had it, I would roll it up like this, and it came in a um, little black bag so you you could put it in this black bag and then it had a drawstring and with the bag and the drawstring it's really simple to just put in my bag or if I was just going to the beach I could clip on with the drawstring onto my cancan on the outside so that was really really useful. I took a lot of strappy tops, two white strappy tops because I knew that I would also have to wear strappy tops, white ones, underneath my school shirts when I was going to volunteer as a teacher. A purple strappy top, a black strappy top which I essentially just mainly slept in a navy one as well. So strappy tops were useful especially if I was doing fitnessy things as well because I didn't end up taking any proper fitness tops. One short sleeve top, this one. Crop tops, this one. An off the shoulder one. And then I took two of the H&M basics. I had the black one like this and the white one which got good use out of. I wore them frequently. And there was also another crop top I forgot to mention because I couldn't find it when I was looking for all the clothes I took. A crop top down to here with a round neck and it's got sleeves like that and it's just black and it's plain. I took two long sleeve tops for when it got really hot and I didn't want to be in the sun. So there's this one and then this one if I wanted to dress up for a bit or anything like that. And I just forgot as well there was this checkered blouse that I also took with me which was really really good because I could tie it around my waist, I could pair it with other things if it was warm or if it was cold. I did also have this one other really really big short sleeve top which I slept in but since it was black it was very hot to sleep in. And then I did take three dresses as well. This really nice pattern one, this one as well. Which actually gets creased incredibly easily but luckily we did have access to an iron uh, at some parts <laughs> along the way of our trip. And then this one, the more fancy one. I did also buy another dress along the way in Australia which I managed to fit in my big packing cube on top of everything else. 
this one which was really thought was very nice and festival vibey for the festival we went to. And bottoms. One pair of grey tracksuit bottoms for flights, for coaches, just to snuggle up in. Two pairs of leggings. This is one pair I'm wearing my second pair now. These kind of harem pants, just like comfy. And then one pair of running leggings. And shorts. Two denim pairs of shorts. One, two, just a comfy pair of shorts. I mainly slept in these, but also for any sporting activity. I also slept in these as well, tighter night pro shorts. I took this just fairly thin Abercrombie jacket, which I could just throw on if I was cold. This kimono as well. And these clothes, although they don't seem like a lot, they were absolutely fine. I still had something different or new to wear every day with the tops and everything I could mix and match. And most of the time you're living in your bikini anyway, especially in Australia. So it really doesn't matter what you wear because you're mainly wearing your bikini underneath and you're just going to the beach. Overall, I would say what I packed is absolutely enough and I will have a list here or here of the amount of things that I did take with me. That all fit in here and I will insert some pictures now of what the cubes look like completely full and what I did was I rolled up my clothes instead of folding them because that helps them to not get creased. Folding them also just means that there's a lot there's a lot more space. This was solely for my winter clothes and it looking at it now it does look really small and I don't know how I got so much stuff in it but apparently I did. First of all I've been to China before in winter and as I said, absolutely freezing cold. It is very, very cold. So I knew that I had to take thermals. Two, so two thermal tops, one long one, one long sleeve one, and a short sleeve, a strappy thermal top, and a pair of leggings, thermal leggings. These aren't actually mine, they are my mum's, and she gave them to me because she knew I'd need them and I didn't own any myself. I also took a hat with me, I think I only used it once, <laughs> took a scarf which I definitely used. I had a nice warm fluffy jumper waiting for me in my winter packing cube along with a pair of jeans, a pair of black jeans. Also had a pair of blue jeans which I have now given away because they are too small. Two extra t-shirts or tops which are long sleeves which I could layer up in the cold winter. Then the fleece, which is so warm. This is really, really nice and warm. I've got a super dry jacket. So I know it rains a lot in China, but also just generally as a coat to have, very warm. Then obviously all my teaching things. So these smart pair of trousers and two white shirts, which are now very creased. I do not understand how I got all of that bar the super dry jacket in here. But with folding and with pushing and with squishing, I got it all in this packing cube. Now shoes. I only took two pairs of shoes with me initially. Converse's, which I wore pretty much every single day. I mean, they're not even white anymore. My pair of running shoes, not because I had plans to do any running or anything, but because they were a pair of very comfortable shoes in case I, we were going to do any trekking or walking for long periods of time. And I knew for definite that when I got to Australia I would buy a pair of flip flops, so I had three pairs of shoes at the time. And I did also keep saying I would find myself a nice pair of sandals in Australia, but I just never found any sandals that I really liked, so I did just end up with just those three pairs of shoes. Okay, electronics time! I took a lot of electronics with me. The camera I am now filming with, which is the Olympus Pen EPL7, uh, I took that to vlog, which you've seen some of the vlog footage in the channel trailer. Here it is if you haven't seen it. I also took my phone. This is a temporary phone at the moment. This is an iPhone 5 temp that I've been lent, but I did have an iPhone 5S that I took at the time. I took my MacBook. I took my MacBook Air with me, 13 inch MacBook Air. So this came on my travels with me. Everything was insured, but it is still a risk to take all of those electronics. My mum is actually really surprised that my MacBook wasn't stolen or anything. <laughs> But, saying that ironically, my phone did get stolen in China, which is why I now have a temp phone. 
Anyway, I did take these things. The only reason I took my laptop was one, because I did want to vlog along the way, but that's not the main reason. The main reason is because I knew I wasn't gonna come home in between Australia and Bali um, and going to China. And I knew that in China, when I was studying Mandarin and also when I was teaching and having to plan lessons, I would need a laptop. And there was no way I was gonna be able to fly home or someone to send it to me. So it was just better if I just took it with me. This was pretty much on me at all times. If you do or have any questions about how I kept my electronics safe, especially when I was on the beach, because I went to the beach a lot of times, I can either do a separate video about how to keep the electronics safe, or I will just answer your questions in the comments below, because I know it's something that I researched about before I left, about how other people did that. In the end, I just kind of winged it and did it my own way. Also took my portable charger. This is an Anchor, Anchor portable charger. This is very good, I would highly recommend it. It's a really big one, I know there's, there's this little small one, but it's just too small for me because that only does one charge. This one does uh, five to six charges, I think it is, or four to five, one or the other, but it's very useful for traveling. It meant that I just didn't have to keep on charging it up. And it was very useful for when we went to the festival. I obviously took all the charges required for all of those things. The camera charger, my laptop charger, and my iPhone charger. I took a universal adapter instead of having to buy three separate adapters for three different countries. This one is the eBoot charger. Although it's quite bulky, it did get kind of annoying, but at the same time, I could charge three different things. So I could charge something through the main section, and then I could, there's also two USB ports here as well. So that was really, really, really handy because I could charge three things at once. I will put a link in the description box for this. I also had this folder, which had all my important documents in, including my passport, all my bookings. So I had my insurance policy, um, my flights that I'd booked, any hotel, um, Airbnbs, hostel bookings, um, tour bookings, etc, etc, etc. I kept all my flights and all other nice mementos in here, which is why it's been bulky in the front. And then in the back, I kept all of my receipts every single one of my receipts in here so I haven't gone through that but there will be a video and a blog post on how much my entire trip cost me with a breakdown for country and city and things like that so if you're interested in that that will be coming up soon because I know that I was very interested in how much it cost and I know that a lot of people have asked me how much it cost and I, I can only give a rough figure and finally just some other miscellaneous things that I took with me a tangle teaser to brush my hair obviously. My mum bought a very cheap copy I think of uh, Silas Marner by George Eliot so I read that because it's a very short book and it was very light to take. In the top of my backpack I put a lot of plastic bags in there because they, they, they were very useful when a plastic bag is not useful. I also in the front took about six or seven sandwich bags but these proved to be very useful when I was changing sim cards and I had to look after the old sim cards and didn't want to lose them. My cousin also, before I left, he sent me this really cute um, travel package because he I couldn't see him, he had been abroad studying. So one of these things was a door lock. So if a door doesn't have a lock, you put this on one side and you hook it round um, and it becomes a lock. We didn't actually end up using this a lot, but we did try it out and it was pretty cool. And I thought it was just small and I thought maybe I would need it. I also have a really funny one. <laughs> Don't know why I took it. I think it's just mainly because um, <laughs> I knew I had a festival to go to, but he sent me a sheepy and I took it with me in the top because I mean very light had space for it so I took it with me and I could have just said to people you know look I have a sheepy guys do you need one look, I have a sheepy guys do you need one but yeah I, it, I brought it back it has not been used did not need it in the festival but I thought you know what at the time maybe maybe I'll need it maybe I'll need to use it who knows another thing you know one of those clip-on um, torches? Yeah, I have a clip-on torch which is in my backpack at the moment. I took with me in the top of my backpack, travel wash. Travel wash is definitely a must if you are a backpacker because you might not have spare cash to splash out on using the laundry facilities and the drying facilities at your hostel. We only splashed out a couple of times, for example, just after we had come back from the festival where we really needed our clothes washed quickly. All of the other times, we just use this simple travel wash and this is very, very easy. You just add some, some of this to hot water, chuck your clothes in, do some scrubbing and then voila, your clothes are done. If you haven't hand washed before, get ready to hand wash on your backpacker trip because you will need to. Also, sun cream, very, 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 very important for sun cream. 
Um, I always get 50 plus because I don't want to burn, but it's very important, especially since I was going to Australia and Bali, which are two very hot countries. I also bought with me these metallic tattoos um, back in Primark before I left, so I had these with me for the festival. I also had a bum bag for the festival, but I could have used it at other times too. This was very, very useful. A big portable charger in here, my purse, my keys, um, everything. Ooh. I had two notebooks. One was just gap year planning and travel that I'd done beforehand. The second one was my TEFL notes. So I had finished my TEFL qualification before I left, and this is just essentially all the notes that I knew would be useful when I was planning my lessons. I also took a medical kit. This is a funny story which I'll probably make a blog post about. But what happened was I lost my medical kit. I left it in Sydney when we flew to Bali and it was just a nightmare getting it back. Thank you Jackaroo Hostel and thank you so much to Tom. In my medical kit, it also had my jewellery in as well, so I did actually think I lost my jewellery at the time. These little cute pouches to keep my jewellery. I had other medications, so I just mainly had like a lot of paracetamol in here, antihistamine because I have hay fever, other like personal medication. See, I also had some, some girl things in here, you know. Girls, you, do need, you don't need to take a whole pack, but you do need to take a couple in case you need it. And then you can just buy the rest out when you're out there. I took a journal. I personally chose to take a journal because I wanted to journal things and write everything down about what we were doing. I took my glasses, obviously. I think I took three months worth of contact lenses for the seven months in total. So I did wear my glasses quite a lot, especially in China, but I did wear my contact lenses most of the time when I was in sunny countries. Obviously I can't show you because I'm finished. Some sunglasses in Australia as well. And I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to know more about my backpack that I used or what else was in my hand luggage or how I actually pack things into my bags then do let me know and I will make another video especially for that. Otherwise if you have any other questions just leave them in the comment section below and I will try my best to answer them. I will see you in my next video. Bye!